everybody and welcome back to Musings by Nikki. This is Nikki and we are going to finish, yes I said finish, the needle book project today. So without further ado, this is how far we've come so far. We made quilted covers. I've got a whole bunch of them. I've finished all of the other ones. This is my last one and we're going to work through the final details in this one with you. So we made the cover, then we made a felt insert and put little pockets and such on it and big pockets here. I've got some ephemera in there. We've got some ephemera in here that we're going to finish up today. Um, I made a signature and we decorated those and then we made just a real simple semi-flexible um, soft cover but we need to sew this in and make a closure for that. We need to make a closure for this and we need to finish the ephemera and then we need to get um, a way to put the book into the back. So we are going to push through all of that quickly in this video. Let us start by uh, binding this journal in. So I am, I've got my journal cover and I've got my journal signature. If you have any questions about this or anything, uh, how we got to this point, then I would suggest going and looking at my last videos, the series um, of Needlebook. I have a playlist. So uh, this cover was made to fit this signature. So what I want to do is quickly flip through and make sure that all of the pages, like I have some that are shorter pages, I want to make sure that stuff's not going to get bound in and make sure they're aligned up and down where I want them to be. Um, I have already done this one for the most part, but I'm just going to do it because the minute I don't do it is the minute it becomes a problem. And oh, look at that cute little dress. Um, okay, so yeah, we're good. So then I'm going to go like this and I'm just kind of tapping it on the top and bottom to make sure my pages are as well aligned as possible and they're, I'm pushing down with my thumbs to kind of flex and make sure the signature is good and tight. And then I'm going to take my um, cover and I'm going to line my pages up. This one is very tight. It is very close to the top and bottom and so I'm going to line them up and then I'm going to pinch really hard here with my fingers on top and bottom like this and I'm going to take my big binder clips and usually when I'm binding a multi-signature book when I'm doing multi-signature then I have to put these into the, not to the cover, but to the binding um, paper. But here we're binding right through the cover. So I'm binding, or I'm putting clips on the signature and the cover to hold the whole entire thing together. So, and I just want to keep making sure that my, um, that my signature is pressed all the way down into this corner as tight as possible so I don't have it going like that or something because then when you put your all through it's going to be harder to make sure it's aligned. So I can see where the fold of my signature matches the fold of my cover and I'm good. This one because these are smaller journals I'm just going to do a three hole um, pamphlet stitch. I'm not going to do usually I do five but there's a, you know there's just so little space here so um and when I am doing a single signature through the cover, I usually just eyeball it. You can measure it if you want to. Um, I definitely do lots of measuring when I bind multi-signature books, but here I'm just eyeballing. So I'm going to put my all in a little bit and then I flip it over and let it kind of like wobble on the owl like this. And that's how I make sure that I'm going to push straight through. Because if I do it like this without like a book binding cradle, then I have a tendency to push sideways through and I don't want that. So I want it to come straight up. So I'm going to, I know it's going to come through here. So I'm going to avoid that area with my fingers all together. There we go. There it is coming through. I work it about halfway up my owl and then I'm done. Then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to just kind of visually go about three quarters of an inch up. Do the same thing. Don't stab yourself. You can also do this part, uh, you know, over the edge of the table. So you're pushing down into like an empty space. And then I'm going to come and do about the same distance in on the top as I went in on the bottom. Get my all started, balance it. And push through. 
there we go there it comes and work my awl about halfway in pull that out we're done with the awl then I'm going to be using some white um, waxed linen thread I do roughly just over two times um, the size of the book and I'm gonna put that onto my needle I finally found my bigger eyed needle you guys oh my gosh I was using one that was so difficult to thread all right if you want your binding threads on the inside so on the outside you just have two lines then um, you want to start from the inside if you want to make a little bow or something cute on the outside or you want to hang some charms on the outside then you would start from the outside we're gonna bind on the inside so I'm gonna go in through the middle then I'm gonna come up through the bottom okay so we went down through the middle and then came back up through the bottom now I'm going to go back down through the middle and if you've got a needle that's sharp at all you have to just make sure that you don't split your thread your waxed linen thread because that's then you can't pull it tight and then we're going to go through the other hole that we haven't sewn yet through the top so we went down through the middle up through the bottom back through the middle up through the top and now we've got our thread here that we started with and we've got this one this one is not going back through the middle it's going to go under this thread right here and that's how they kind of join then in the middle I'm going to pull my needle off and then I just kind of give this a good tug I don't want to pull too hard because I don't want to tear anything but I want to tighten up my stitches then I always test it by flipping it over and making sure that these feel nice and snug without being they should have a little movement but not too much the the last thing you want to do is work so hard on a cover and signatures and now I'm just going to tie it in a double knot the waxed linen thread holds that knot really snug and really well um, the last thing you want to do is work so hard on all of this and then you know have your signatures be loose and have it be a problem I'm just snipping mine off you can tie little threads or you can tie little charms on there you can tie buttons on them you know whatever you want to do that's totally up to you but for this because we've got so much other stuff going on I'm not gonna put a uh, charms on it not today so that's as easy as that is bound with a three whole pamphlet stitch real simple real quick and easy then I usually go through and kind of just give every couple of pages a nice push start from the front and the back just kind of give them a make sure everything's nice and smoothed in there okay so that's all good now it needs a closure so um, because in the back of this journal we are going to be making a, some sort of a tie down in here to go over the top of this um, you just have to keep that in mind and I will show you the other examples you'll see the other examples of all the other needle books that I finished in my um, in my flip through but uh, I've, I've done several different types of closures on here it's really up to you oh the other thing I'm gonna do is I made a few of these cute little charms it's just a button and I've got over here I've got like handfuls of uh, different types of sewing charms I bought a package of them last time I was working on sewing charms or uh, sewing books or needle books and stuff and still had a bunch left over so I made a few of these and I'm just gonna find a place I know I've got some lace and fabric in here so I'm gonna find a place and this is perfect because there's a button and just put one of these little bulb pins through then we'll have some danglies as well cute little danglies to go on the edge of that page right and then let's try to find one where we can come down a little again you can add as many or as few in as you want to um, I'm trying to not overdo it because we've got a lot of other stuff and I, I knew there was other lace in here okay so I'll go with this one Oops. 
There we go. Okay, now we have a paper button and some real buttons and a little charm. So when we close it, we've got a couple fun little charms and then our closure can go around the middle. Um, <clears throat> I think for this one, I'm going to use a simple button and elastic closure. And let me just show you. That's how this needle book is closed. So button and elastic like that. So let's make one of those really quick. What we need is a big button. I've got some of my massive button collection right here. This one looks kind of cute. I like it's shiny. So we'll go with that. And then this is just, um, it's just elastic bead cord. Um, it's pretty flexible, pretty elastic-y. And what we want to do is feed. So find the back of your button. This works best with two hole buttons. If you had a four hole button, you would really only be able to go through two of them, I think. You could experiment with that, but it would be pretty hard to do four, I think. Although, y'all are creative people and I'm sure you could figure it out. Okay, so we want the be the button on there. And then we just kind of measure before you just cut randomly. You want it to go, so we double up, right, like this. Just give yourself some slack. And I'm still attached over here because I don't want to cut it off yet. I don't want to waste any. So I want it to come to the front and I want it to come around. And ooh, I did a pretty good guess. So without it stretched, without it stretched, you want it to just go past where your button is like this. I'm trying to figure out, can I show you this? Okay. So you want it to come just past because we're going to tie a knot here and then, then it'll go around the button and we want it to be slightly taut. So I actually guessed that pretty darn well. Okay. One more time. I'm going to want these to come just past where my button is when it's not stretched. Okay. So then we're going to... Once you're satisfied with the length, we're going to tie just a little knot in the end. And I like to leave a little tail because I kind of think it looks cool. That's just me. You do you. But I'm going to tie a little knot. Just a simple knot, right? And then I'm going to move my button down to that end. Because then your tail kind of hangs out the end of the button and it makes it look like it's somehow tied or something differently than it actually is. And then it just literally wraps around the back and goes over the front like so. And then that's where these little these little cords sticking out, right? It looks like I've done something that I haven't actually done. I like the little guys, but you can cut them off. And there you go. That is as simple as that. That is a that is one of the quickest, easiest, simplest closures you can do and um and it works perfectly for this because it is a sewing book so we've got a button on there and how appropriate right now we need to find a way to fix this into the back of the um journal so i'm going to show you a couple of examples of different ways i've done it in my other needle books so this one's got a closure on it. Oh, and it's got some little charms on there. Let's well, that's because it's on the front here though. You know what? So this one, I have run a piece of elastic and I've just sewn it on the bottom and on the top. And then the, oh, and I closed the closure on this one is an old um, vintage measuring tape. And so this one now slides in and out of the elastic. I could have made it tighter but I didn't want to make it too tight because I don't want it to be pulling on this cover like this. So I want it just tight enough to kind of hold the book in place, but not be, you know, pulling it down and like that. Does that make sense? So there's elastic. That was a piece of elastic I did. Oh, and then here's some examples of what we're going to do to just kind of fill in the pages here. We're going to fill in, put some pins in um, and fill in some ephemera. Okay, so we'll be finishing up that in a minute here. OK, 
Okay, so there's the cover on that one. And I still I have all my information to do a flip through when these are done. All right, then here's another example. Excuse me, I think I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, this one is tied in with a piece of that measuring tape ribbon that I have. So I've just tied a piece on the bar, sewn a piece onto the bottom and sewn a piece onto the top. And then my book lays in the middle. And this one's closed with a piece of vintage silk ribbon. And then these come from the top and the bottom and tie. And I kind of dig this because I love how it ends up looking like a, a present, like a wrapped present. Because it has a bow on it, so it's got the cross ribbon here and this here. I kind of love that. And the two bows. So that one's fixed in there like that. The journals are all removable. That's our key, right? Or our goal is to make it so that the journals are removable. Okay, and then the last example I'm going to show you is this one. This one has a little elastic closure on it where it's a, um, instead of the big button closure, it has a piece of elastic lace and a button on front and it just loops over. Okay. And the way I did this one was I sewed, I actually used my sewing machine and put a buttonhole in to a piece of like seam stabilizer <clears throat> and then sewed a button on this side. So you can actually put the button through. Now it's loose enough again where it's not going to be pulling on this fabric, right? And my elastic ribbon is sewn where I sewed these in as well. So this is certainly something you could do. This is an option if you feel confident with your sewing machine and putting a buttonhole in, then you could do this. It's a super cute, that's probably my favorite one. But I realize that not everybody has um, a sewing machine and not everybody feels confident in putting a buttonhole in. I know I certainly did not until I finally conquered my fears and tried it. And then I was like, oh, this isn't so bad. All right, so... Here is our journal, and we need to find a way. So first you need to decide, do you want to go top to bottom and meet in the middle, or side to side? Now, because on this cover, I've got plenty of room here on the sides, I think that's what I'll do, side to side and go over the top, okay? And so we're either going over this, or you can slide this up, so your closure on your journal is up a little higher, and then our closure on our book will be here, right? Or vice versa, you can do it either way. I just like to center it on here because this is removable. So I have got, let's see, I've got some options out on my desk here. I do have some, um, some crinkly seam binding and this would certainly make a cute tie to come up in the front and tie off, just tie a ribbon, a bow, a bow, that's the word I was looking for. Um, I do have more of the elastic lace we could certainly just sew some of that down and the book could slide in and out that would be an option remember it's not it doesn't have to hold it you know just by the sheer force of the journal being closed that will do enough to hold it in place so it doesn't have to be something that's going to make it so it's like immovable oops i'm just throwing stuff around i still got some of this measuring tape ribbon too let's see how much i've got it just has to be something that'll hold it in place um, I don't know if I've got enough to, oh yeah, I do, to come up and tie. Well, that'd be kind of cute because we've got the measuring tape there too. What we could do would be to go like this, you know, find, find center. And then just literally zigzag stitch or something over the top of this. Then you would lay your journal in. Oops and tie around it. Let's do that. I haven't done one like that yet. So let's do that. I'm going to, again, since I did that a little haphazardly, find center is on that six right there. And I'm just gonna eyeball where center is here. And then so it doesn't move around when I go to my sewing machine. I'm just going to pop a pin in here.
And then I'm just going to go and zigzag. This cover is fabric, and you will see a zigzag stitch on the outside, and I am okay with that. That does not bother me. Um, if it bothers you, you could certainly plan way ahead and do it through this felt before you go ahead and do all the edging and stuff. That's way too much forward planning for me. <laughs> and since this is kind of a raggedy sewing, you know, half quilted, not anything, you know, professionally done book, I'm cool with it. So I'm going to go put a zigzag through here and I'll be right back. Okay. I decided while I was over there that I would go with a little bit more decorative stitch than a zigzag because it will be visible and I thought wouldn't that be kind of cute. So I'll show you in a second. You can kind of just barely tell. Just, just trim these strings off. You can barely tell. But I did a leaf stitch. Like a vine and leaf stitch. You can kind of see it there. Anyway, it's cute. And now this is attached down in there. And our book will lay down and we will tie it in. Again, I'm not trying to tie it super tight because I don't want to pull the edges of my book or cover in because it's flexible, right? So there we go. Now our journal is properly in place, thus making this somewhat chunky, but we're going to make it even chunkier, right? Because these are chunky needle books. So our journal is in there. Now for sake of ease in working on this, I'm going to take it out just for now um, because we're going to work on the ephemera here. So in the front of mine, I usually put... Um, well, you know what? Let's work on a closure for the entire needle book first. So I think with the other ones, I've done some of the button, total button closures, and then I've done the little elastic one. Let me, since we did a button closure on the journal, let me show you how I do the elastic lace closure with a button. So this is what I'm using. I don't, I think this is still available. I got it at Hobby Lobby and I've rebought it a couple of times. It's just a simplicity trim and um, it's elastic lace. It doesn't have a ton of elasticity, but just enough to give you a tiny bit of stretch. So we're going to want, again, another button. Let me get out my buttons. And for this one, I might go with like a big giant button because that's kind of fun. Big giant. Ooh, I like the yellow there maybe. White or yellow? White, yellow. I feel like the eye doctor. White, yellow. White, uh, I'll go with the yellow. You can do like buttons on top of buttons, right? So sometimes if you have a button like this, you can go with another one in between like that. That's kind of cute too, right? A doubled up button. We could do that. Let's see. Oh my gosh, I just messed with my buttons for like five whole minutes and decided to go with the white button anyway. Um, because I just like it. It's a little dirty though, but it's because it's vintage. It's like an old button. But I think it's not dirty so much as it's just kind of aged. Yeah. Okay. So you want your button on the front. And then you want to get enough of this elastic lace doubled over, right? So that you can... I like to fold, like once I cut it, I like to fold it under so it has a nice clean edge and stitch that down. And then you want the loop to be big enough to come over your button on top. And you can kind of, I wouldn't sew this down until you've done your elastic because then you can gauge where you want this based on how big your elastic is. So you can kind of dry fit it. And I'm going to say about there so that's about how big my loop is mine is about four inches long without any sort of folded over end <clears throat> then right here at the same like level as where I've got my tie going and I've zigzagged around on the seam binding so I'm going to take my two ends of my elastic lace here I'm going to line them up together as best as I can because it's all ruffly on the edges and then I'm going to fold it under together to give it a nice clean edge so nice clean edge and then I'm going to go and 
zigzag over the top of that right at the same spot where the zigzag on my binding is so it kind of just covers it up and hides it a little bit there with right or you know disguises it right in there um, and the fold is going under so the clean edge is out here on the side so I'm gonna go zip that through my machine and I'll be right back alrighty so that is sewn on okay so that is sewn on right there and because I just folded it under a little I've got a little bit of an edge there I'm gonna try and snip that off quick but it kind of just hides it this lace the little bit of frilliness makes it nice and clean looking so now we've got our closures lined up together there right so our book our needle book closure and then our journal tie in um, so now we can close it and then you you'll know where to put your button but we don't want to do that until we've got all of our ephemera and everything in there because right now if we put the button way over here this is not nearly as chunky as it will be with the um, journal and all the ephemera in here so I'm gonna sew that on last <clears throat> now um, what I like to do in this front cover again because this is just kind of a um, you know it's like it's like costume jewelry right so we just kind of do some fun little samples of things like it's supposed to look like a um, needle book like that's been been being used is that correct English been being it's been being used <laughs> um, so what I like to do is get little samples of things and stuff and junk so I've got some little pieces of lace so I will snip off a piece of this and basically what I try to make it look like kind of my goal is like oh, okay if you were doing a project and you ended up with a little leftover of something and you just kind of can pin it into here right also I just I must say if you guys have watched my channel for any amount of time you've heard me talk about um, my lovely friend Dorothy a friend of our family who passed away and now her daughters are going through her house and I keep inheriting things as they go through she was kind of a pack rat and um and she just had tons and tons of stuff but I am then the big winner when they find things that they would normally pass like you know just throw away and I said recently on one of their trips up here that I was working on needle books and oh my goodness so look at some of this vintage little pieces I don't know why I mean sometimes you go why did she keep the thing she kept but here are some needle you know packages here's an actual like little old vintage needle book Look at that. Oh my gosh. How sweet. The funny thing is this is a rose and it's all pretty. And then this is like cobwebs in the foil embossing. <laughs> um, some old rickrack. Some old, oh these, there's some of these in, in all of the, some of these invisible loops, hook and eyes. And then there are, oh yeah, some little pieces of that. Some corset ties, you guys. These are corset ties. Crazy, right? Corset ties. Uh, some old elastic. Some more corset ties. Oh, I've got this sample. I was going to put this in one. So this is like um, supporters. And I don't know if it's like for socks. It says sew on supporters. And it's this is the label is actually a little piece of tin. And it's crimped on here. It's crazy. And they're sewn together. So I don't know if this is like garter. I don't know but some sort of suspenders some sort of garters thing I'm not sure anyway I love it so that's gonna get stuck in here um, there were some like stocking things so I've put attached a few of those in I think since I'm putting this one in here I'll do that anyway this is awesome and then along with that they gave me these two needle like pin cushion things this one's falling apart <laughs> look at it adorable and um, this is full of all kinds of little vintage pins and needles so I've been putting those in here too so I am pulling from those and using them to pin the stuff in the front so what I'm doing is just kind of pinning through now this one might be hard because it's elastic but I want to pin through the felt but not all the way through the cover because you know what I wonder if I can go just over the back um, because that's what the felt part is for, right? 
and then I go let's move it over a bit and then I just try to bury the pointy part of the needle into the felt but not all the way through to the cover so I don't get my finger stuck there but it's pinned on and then I'm gonna just do some other little samples of stuff I kind of just fold them up a little and then pin it on and I'm just grabbing pins out of the pin cushion And then again, I'm just trying to bury that end to make sure it's not poking through. Certainly, if you were to purchase one of these when they're done or something and you didn't want that, you know, pins in the front, you can view, that's up to you, you can do what you want. I also got some old measuring tapes. So let's roll some of that up and tape, put it in here. I've cut some of them apart because again, this is not, um, these are not meant to be like totally functional. They're just meant to be, what's the word I'm looking for, you guys? I cannot think of the word I'm trying to find, clearly. Okay, so there we go. So that's just kind of pinned in. I'm not pinning through it. I'm just pinning over it, okay, and it's staying in there pretty well. Um, what is another sample of things that I want to put in there. Oh, sometimes I'll just put a couple of, like are there some vintage safety pins? So you can throw a couple of those in. Right, there's some, here's another small one. I'll throw that on there. Like that. And let's put a sample of embroidery floss. So here's where, um, if you have this, if you purchased my needle book kit, then um, you would have this little piece of ephemera. And you can use this a couple ways. If you want to put a bigger sample in, you can roll it around. And it's meant to be like these things that come off of your embroidery floss. But clearly this is bigger. So you can do it one of two ways. Well, you can do it whatever you want with it. Again, I'm going to go with it. I've got some of this white embroidery floss. So I'm going to pull off a piece of embroidery floss here. And then I'm going to just wind it into a smaller sample piece. So I'm going to just kind of wind it around my fingers here. Okay. So now I've got my own little mini skein of embroidery floss. And you can do one of two things. You can just put some glue on here and then glue it, fold it over, and glue it on back. And then you've got, I mean, it's not going anywhere, but again, it's like costume jewelry, right? It's not meant to be functional. But if you want it to stay functional, the other way you can do this is, get my little skein here, and then go in the middle of the like little design part and fold it around and match up the ends here and then put a staple in on the edge and then we'll trim it off. So let's do that on this one, right? So you see what I've got going on? So I'm kind of pulling the embroidery floss over to the edge like this and I'm gonna put a staple through here. Let's grab my stapler. Okay, and then I'm going to just trim right at the edge of my staple. So now I've got a little sample, and now this way somebody could actually use this thread because it can come out of there. So okay, we'll attach that down to the, I'm just going to kind of go over the top of it again. we go now it's attached and it's in there so look we've got a nice little display of some things we could put something else here too then we've got our scissor pocket and we made that in the video and then this is our flip up and remember this is where we can put all kinds of pins and needles and things so I've got some needles some sewing needles that um, are just cheap sewing needles 
but for aesthetic purposes, we're going to put some of them in here. And so I'm putting a couple of those. These are tiny little embroidery ones. Props to you guys that can sit and do embroidery with these tiny little needles for a long time. You know, that's a thing that would be so adorable on this or like on the cover would be some hand slow stitching along the edges of this, like before you put this on. That would be so pretty. I just, I can't slow stitch for very long. Doing the blanket stitch around the edges here almost kills my hands. <clears throat> okay, and then I've got a few bigger ones here. I'm going to put those down here. Novelty is the word I was looking for, you guys. This is kind of a novelty journal. However, it can also be very viably a needle book. It's just up to you, you know, what your desire is. I've got some more of these vintage um, safety pins. So I'll put those on. Let's see, here's another small one. Stephanie and Jennifer, if you guys are watching this, Steph, the box you brought me is awesome. This is so perfect for this journal. <clears throat> Here's one more. Oh, I just wrecked my nail polish, you guys. Oh. <laughs> I pinned it with my... I scraped it out with my pin. Okay, so there I've got some of those. And then you could put some little, I've got a bunch of these little old, old, old pins here. So we'll put a couple of those in there as well. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got some pins in there, and it flips down. Uh-oh, here comes the sirens, guys. That's not good. We hear so few sirens around here. Ooh, ambulance. Scary. It's scary when you live in a small community and an ambulance comes by because you... You know so many people in the community that you always, then you start going, God, I wonder who it is, and I pray that they're okay. Um, we know because recently it was my dad who we called it for. We're very thankful for our first responders. Okay, so here is the pin uh, part that I made. And remember, I bought these off of Amazon, and they are just like some large pearl-topped, teardropped uh, pearl-topped, corsage pins but I just thought I really like the way they look I love the pearl top on them so we put the layers of felt here so that you can pin down through and if it comes out the bottom like this then I just kind of again bury that down into the felt so that look I can go like this around on the edge edge on the bottom of that and I don't feel it so it's just kind of buried right back down Let's do that again. Okay, now we've got a sweet little lineup of pearl pins. And then the reason you double or triple up your felt like this, you can, let me just show you with one of my, like just not vintage, modern, regular old sewing pins. You can do a second layer of them through that top um, through the top layers of felt as well. So you could have a second layer of pins going through like that, right, if you wanted to. I, for the sake of this, am not going to do that. Um, then we got some of these pieces that come with, if you did the, if you have the needle book kit, if you have my needle book kit, then you got these pieces of ephemera as well. <coughs> and these. <coughs> Hang on. <clears throat> okay. So this one is a needle card. You can just completely use these like ephemera if you want to and just put them in and have them be like ephemera. Or 
this needle card, if you look really closely, has some little white dots, a top and bottom row, and we can put in some needles into the card. So here's what I'm suggesting. You poke, you pre-poke your holes. Now mine are backed with um, cardstock, so I definitely want to pre-poke my holes for these to go through. And make sure you have needles that are long enough to make it through the two sets of holes. And now to make it look like this is authentic, I'm going to poke all the holes, but I'm only going to put two needles in, right? Like it's been used. Get it, guys? <laughs> All right, and then I'm going to put a couple needles in just through the middle and through the back. And then while it's kind of bent like this, I'm going to do the other one and then I'll straighten it out. Ooh, there is a dog somewhere that is little and yippy and not happy right now. All right. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's it's like it got tied up outside or something and it doesn't want to be. Okay, so I've got my needles in. And then I'm just going to flatten out the cardboard around them and kind of give a crease. And there we go. So now we have like a faux needle card. These ones, clearly, top quality buttons and shirt buttons. You can sew buttons onto them if you want to. It's kind of cute. This one you can leave as is, or you can wrap some thread around it like a thread card, and this one's certainly the same as well. Let's do this one. I've got a bunch of excess leftover embroidery floss, so I'm going to pull a bunch off, and we'll wrap both of these in thread. So I'm just going to hold my thing over and wrap and wrap and wrap. And untangle. <laughs> okay. And then when I get to the end, you can do whatever you want to. You can make a little slit to pull it through or something. I'm just going to tie it off in a little knot. Because again, novelty, now that I remember the word I'm looking for. Right? And then I'm going to just trim this off. So now we have a little thread sample card. And we can stick that in. And then we can do this one as well. Let's do that one with some, I've got some blue thread here. Let's do this blue. All right, there I've got another little floss card, right? A little thread card. So I'm gonna put this in this top pocket. Is that where I had it before, I think? Or did I have it in that one? That one's a little deeper. Yeah, there we go. And this is not, that's just one pocket there. Oh, I had the button cards in here. Yeah. And this was in back here or this was in the front I think and then oh that's where the needle one was in that pocket there and the button cards were in here okay hold on I'm gonna sneeze again Okay, so tying, uh, putting some buttons onto these I think is adorable. And here is another one of my button containers. And I'm just going to, you don't have to, um, I'll fast forward through it, but <laughs> I'm just going to sew some cute mismatched random buttons on and show you what that looks like. I've just got a piece of um, brown embroidery floss here. And I'm going to just sew some randos onto this little card to make it adorable. Okay, 
adorable is that, right? Like a little rando button card. So that's super cute. Um, and then you can do the same on this one. You can leave them as just journaling cards. I might just leave the one with buttons on it and the other one without. Um, let me put... Okay, so now we've completed some ephemera to go into the pockets, right? Um, I do also have a couple more of these little charms, so I'm going to attach some of those onto the corners here because I just love little danglies on things. So there's one there. And then, um, oh, that doesn't want to stay together there. I might have to go through the measuring tape a little to keep it secured, which is fine since it's made out of material. All right. I think I'll put this down here on the front of this little flap to have a cute little charm there. And then I do have, and I wanted to show you this, I found these charms. They're little hangers, right? Can you tell? There we go. It's a little hanger, and it's perfect for making a little, you can stitch ribbon, like you can put ribbon there, through the little hanger part, and then I just zigzagged over it, or you can stitch it over the top, and each of the other ones has one. So I'm gonna make one for uh, this journal as well. So what I'm gonna do is just take some ribbon. This is also, again, from the Stephanie and Jennifer Dorothy crew, and I'm going to slice off a little bit here. This stuff hasn't even been fully integrated into my stash yet. And then I'm going to give it a little like bunting edge, you know, that. Do the same here. So it just looks like it's hanging on the hanger adorable. I um, You could glue it, but I'm just going to go zip across it with my sewing machine. There we go. And I thought I had a bulb. Oh, I do. There you go. I have a little bulb pin, and I'm going to just attach it through the top of that charm. And that's just going to get pinned on here as well. It's nice because all this stuff is all fabric and felt. So look how adorable is that hanging there. And then I'm going to take a few other pieces. So I think this this one will get the adorable needle book in it. And then a piece of this um, hook and eye stuff will go in here. Some vintage pieces as well. And maybe one more. Let's see. This one gets this little uh, invisible eye. It's like a little envelope. It's so cute. Okay, so we'll put that in here with this one. So there's some little vintage pieces of ephemera in there as well. So now we've got all this, these pockets and this ephemera completed. Remember in here, I've just got some of the larger pieces from tailor-made journals, um, from, Taylor, from Lorna's kit, sewing ephemera kit. We will put this back in. and tie it shut and then last but so there we go see now how chunky it is <laughs> so that's why we didn't want to sew this on before it, when it was too early because now I'm going to need it to come over towards the edge more 
so that like I need it over towards the edge otherwise this won't fit over so I'm going to unthread with brown because I don't want to use brown for this we'll probably use some white or like off-white creamy colored and I'm gonna sew a button on wanted to show you um, I just sewed through and cut only these top layers of fabric with my button that way you don't see the sewing on the button in the back it's a little bit more difficult but when you're doing a big button like this it's easier so there we go look at that now we have this adorable little closure it holds it closed but it allows it to be in its full chunky glory as well holy cow that was a big load of logs and there we go that is our needle book completed, right? So now I've got all of them. Oh my goodness. One, two, three, four, five of these things, you guys. Oh my gosh. There's so many of them, they can't even all fit in my, they can't all even fit all in here. So my next video, right after this, as soon as I get off of this video, I'm going to edit and then I will film a flip through of these and they will all be going into my shop um, in the next day or two here. So I hope that this made sense. I hope you really guys enjoyed, really guys enjoyed. I hope you guys really enjoyed coming on this needlebook journey with me. Um, if you have any questions, again, put them down in the description or I mean in the comments oh my gosh and I will try to answer them as best I can and um, I hope that you guys are having a wonderful morning afternoon evening or maybe it's the middle of the night whatever time it is on whatever side of this globe of ours that you live on and until I see you next time stay safe take care and God bless you bye guys